Hello, everyone. Hey, welcome. Welcome to this segment of That Girl and That Guy providing leadership solutions to small and medium-sized business owners. I'm your host for this, this go around. I'm Mike Temple, leadership and strategy advisor. And uh, today's topic, I know it's a top talk, uh, a top topic, because I, with my clients, I've spoken with many of you about this. I know it's real. I know it's true. And I know it's bugging you. And it is no cash clarity. Take control of your cash before your cash controls you. And we're going to get dive deep as to what that control actually means. And we have with us industry expert and savant. Ladies and gentlemen, I did, I was able to actually schedule her, Donna Beavis. Donna, say hello to everyone. Hey, everybody. Good to be here with you, Mike. Thanks <laughs> for having me. My pleasure. I've known Donna for many years. Um, check out her well-rounded background. All right. Got it written right here, word for word. She's got a master's uh, degree in accounting. She is the virtual CFO of my favorite company, Temple Executive Coaching, as well as she is the owner of Integrity Business Advisors. She has got a really deep um, and diverse background. Uh, different industries, such as uh, one that we both share, the logistics industry, uh, one in construction, in restaurants, uh, e-commerce, in manufacturing, and she even worked on the state level. She was an assistant auditor for the state of Washington, and Donna, to kind of introduce yourself, you got really kind of an, a very interesting story when you were an auditor with the state of Washington. Can you tell us about it? It's, uh, it's quite a story and I never get tired of telling it because it's kind of humorous. <laughs> so um, I was about three months into my career with the state and I had the opportunity to do an accountability audit at a police station. So mm -hmm. what I was doing was the audit of their police evidence room, well. which was I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so much fun. Um, I was so excited to do this because it was like, wow, this is interesting. You know, the other stuff, you know, who cares where you spent your money, right? right? This one was all about, is the stuff still there? You know, did somebody steal the counterfeit money kind of thing, you know? Anyway, oh. so um, I, um, it was the day I was going to do the audit. And so I went over to the police station. I had my little clipboard that had all of the things that I had selected, you know, that I was going to check for, you know, things that can grow legs and walk off potentially. Uh -huh. um, and um, put my gloves on and we walk into this 12 by 14 size room. You know, it was a locked door, you know, mm -hmm. um, a very confined space. And um, so I start, you know, looking around and there's all these, these paper bags and plastic. There's, you know, some lock cabinets. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Holy moly, this is like the real CSI stuff. You've got paper bags. Totally. Got... And those are like, you ask my husband, those are my favorite shows. Yeah. You know, I love that stuff. You know, that CSI stuff and all yeah. the science, you know, and all the evidence stuff. Anyway, so I'm standing in this room and I'm like, this is so cool. Anyway, um, <laughs> got my gloves on and I start, searching for everything that I needed, you know, um, I got to look at guns that have been taken, you know, or, you know, maybe somebody got shot or, you know, they were seized with a, somebody getting pulled over. Wow. I got to actually see and hold counterfeit money, which was fascinating to me, you know, cause I'd never okay. seen anything like that before. You know, I just heard about it on TV and all the drugs, there was a massive amount of drugs in this room. Nice. So as I'm going along, you know, I was in this room for about an hour and 20 minutes. Okay. I'm going along and I start having some little bit of issues. So I'm allergic to flowers. And so um, I get, my, my throat would get raspy. My uh -huh. nose would start running. I'd start feeling a little short of breath. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't think anything of it because that was a natural reaction to high, you know, sense. And I mean, this room just reeked of pot, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I didn't see, I've never seen so much pot in my entire life. Anyway, <laughs> I get done 
with the audit and I go back to the conference room, it's lunchtime. And I was kind of laughing at myself because I'm like, <laughs> God, I sound funny. This is crazy. So I call my sister who has severe allergies to hazelnuts and I call her, I get her voice and I say, Hey, do I sound familiar? You know, cause I sounded like her, I was being funny. And, um, so I hang up and she calls me back a few minutes later and she's like, what's going on? What's the matter with your voice? And I said, well, I just did an audit of a police evidence room. There was like tons of drugs in there. I said, and I walked out sounding like this. I said, I thought it was funny. So I thought I'd call and tell you how I, you know, I sound like you. And um, she's like, Donna, you're having an anaphylactic reaction. You've got to go stab yourself with an EpiPen and get to the ER. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, I start freaking out. I'm like, here I am having fun. I said, you're being ridiculous. She's like, no, I'm being serious right now. Listen to me. You've got to go do this. And I'm like, okay. You know, because you know, as I'm sitting there, it's getting a little progressively worse, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I carry an EpiPen because I'm allergic to bees. So praise God, I had one, right? Okay. So I go into the bathroom, I stab myself with the EpiPen, which I had never used up until that time. <laughs> and I had my coworker drive me to the ER. That's how I ended my day on my first day of this audit that I was so excited to do. So yeah. So that's the hard way I found out that I'm allergic to marijuana. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, holy moly. Your, your, your first inadvertent experience of getting high, it happens at the police station. And you know, <laughs> instead of going to the bathroom to, you know, to shoot up on, you know, meth or something, you're, uh, you know, shooting up on, you know, meth and yep. uh, Donna, did they, is it true, did they give you a badge and a gun? I only had my badge. They did not bless me with my own gun or uh, let me use right. one that I found, you know. All right, you had a lanyard, lame. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Data Washington, Dolan Boring. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, today's topic, we're, we're talking a little bit about <clears throat> with no cash clarity, it's going to control you and you've got to start controlling your cash. All right. So, Donna, let me ask you what in the world is no? cash clarity. What is that? Well, Mike, it's kind of exactly what you said. You're just not clear on where your money's at. You have no idea where your cash is coming from. You have no idea where it's going. You don't know where it should be going, when it should be going. So you have no idea how much you actually have. You just have a balance in your bank account, hopefully, mm -hmm. you know? So you know, you're running your business, you're running from job site to job site, or maybe you're running to the store because you ran out of lettuce, whatever that looks like for whatever industry you're in, mm -hmm. you know, you're just doing what you always do. You're running your business the best that you can. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, you just feel lost, right? Mm -hmm. You, you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know anything. How am I supposed to do this? You know? And mm -hmm. so you just, you're just winging it day to day. You are winging it. And that's not a really good feeling. So here you are, you're lost in the sauce. You know, somebody took your last little piece of garlic bread. You know, you can't have sauce without garlic bread, right? right. Have you ever heard that one? <laughs> Anyways, um, so here you are, you are just lost. And, and so what I've seen is, you know, business owners and they, they um, under pressure, they run out and get a short-term loan or, um, actual fast cash loan just to meet their what they need to do for that week Ooh. so a lot of times it's payroll and they want to make sure their employees are paid because right. they're you know employees are their biggest asset and they really care about them so you know they want to make sure their employees get paid wow. and so they do whatever they can mm -hmm. to survive the week the day yeah. the hour whatever it happens to be yeah i, I like how you said that geez i mean without controlling your cash, it really is starting to control aspects um, of your life. Now, in, yeah. in, your, in your experience in, in doing this, Don, I know, I know you've worked with hundreds of, of business, business owners. When you're winging it like this, you know, short term, you know, fast cash loans to, you know, purchase inventory to, you know, finish a job or to restock the shelves. <laughs> you know, like you said, you're kind of swimming in the sauce. What in the world in your experience, does this do to the mindset of the business owner? 
you know, it can be pretty terrible. You know, um, people start to hate their businesses. They forgot their why. They don't remember why they wanted to do what they're doing in the first place. Mm -hmm. They get depressed. You know, they start thinking about bankruptcy. They start having family issues. So it flows over into your, you know, your family life. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got anxiety. They can't sleep. Some start self-medicating. You know, they just get frozen in fear and they can't make decisions. They don't know they don't know what decision to make because they're, you know, they just, they're like, oh my gosh, I just, I don't know what to do. Wow. So they just have knee jerk reactions. And, okay. Okay. and so, it, you know, there's that fear just blocks them from, you know, from doing anything, you know? Yeah. yeah afraid of the next decision that they make uh, will, you know, will make things worse. So I can, I can, I can kind of see what you're saying. You know, uh, if I make it any other decisions, it's just going to make the, make the problem even worse. So, mm -hmm. so <clears throat> when you do talk about the frozen with fear and you can't make a decision, I, I mean, have you seen this before? I have. And actually, um, as an example, and this is the easiest way that I can explain it is just to give you a, a colorful example. Um, I had a client that I was working with. She was an amazing person. She had so much passion for what she was doing. She's mm -hmm. actually a, a store owner of a CBD um, a store down south. Right. Funny, another funny, I'm allergic to hemp. So yeah. no CBD <laughs> oil for me or CBD, can't even say it. Yeah, um, well, Donna, you're going to suck as a drug dealer. It's just not going to work out. I know. Maybe you could be a, a drug sniffing dog. Maybe there's something like that for you. I oh. could pass for, you know, one of those at the high, at, at the high school, though, the, my friends used to tease me and say, Hey, you should go be a drug sniffer at the high school <laughs> because my nose was so sensitive from all this out. <laughs> yeah. Get a job. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah. Humor. Anyways. Um, so super amazing woman. She knew so much about that business. She was, it was just fascinating to listen to her and her knowledge, but, um, she was really struggling. She had a store closed down um, and the store was like four hours from her. So she was traveling back and forth between the two stores and she was drowning in debt. She didn't have any cash in the bank mm -hmm. and she had to move the store, which meant she had all this extra inventory. And she's like, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know how I can turn this around. I'm going to lose everything I have. Mm -hmm. And I, so I said, well, do you need all that inventory? And she's like, no, I've got too much of it. And, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, well, if you could sell some of that inventory, you would have immediate inflow of cash. And that would, you know, help you at least today get, you know, through, you know, a few weeks or, you know, whatever that looks like. Um, have you thought about selling it? She's like, well, yeah. And, um, she says, I actually found somebody, you know, another business owner uh, that would buy it for me. I'm like, okay. have you called her? You know, I called them and she's like, well, no. Oh, there and I'm like, and so there you have it. Yeah. She wasn't, she was, she didn't know what to do. She didn't, she couldn't make that decision. Right. She knew what she had to do, mm -hmm. but she literally was frozen and couldn't do it. Wow. So, yeah. So the business owner, typically they'll, they'll kind of, they'll kind of know, but not really know. Right. And so that, that fear just, it just debilitates them. Yeah. Loss so, of, yeah. Loss of confidence in themselves, the depression that, they, that, that makes, yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. So, you know, we, let me ask you, we, we have no idea. We have no idea where the cash is. We have no idea when, when it's coming from, we have no idea where it should be coming from. And when it does come in, we have no idea where it should, where it should even be going. I can now start to see where the cash is controlling us. It's controlling our emotions. It's controlling, if we can make a decision, it's controlling our decisions. So yeah, I mean, quite honestly, now that we're in this position, how do we, how do we figure this thing out? I mean, you know, the example you had, um, you know, that, that particular client, she was passionate, she was bright, she was smart. Yeah. Uh, she knew the product inside and out. Uh, the cash part seemed to have been cr crippling her. Like it does most entrepreneurs, their strength is not on the finance side. They don't start a business because they love business finance, you know, uh, right. unless you're an accountant, right? You know, unless, you, <laughs> unless you're Donna Thebus, no one's in accounting, 
uh, <laughs> accounting company. And at the same time, you know, you do evidence. But uh, so how do we figure this thing out? We don't know where the cash is, where it's going. How do we get, a, what's the first step in getting control of this stupid thing? Yeah, so there's a very simple thing that you can do. It's a, it's a little um, process that you can go through mm -hmm. that will help you to gain some clarity. Okay, okay. so let me just walk you through that. All right. If you if you're interested, I mean, yeah. I'm sure that you are. That's what we're here to talk about. So, uh, <laughs> Save me um, from myself. there's just yeah, just a few steps that a business owner can take to mm -hmm. gain that clarity they need to take the next step forward to move past, you know, and get going on a good path. So uh, the first thing they need to do is they need to gather some data. Okay. And let's focus on a short-term plan for the sake of this conversation. Okay. And so let's say the next 30 days. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at improving our cash flow for the next 30 days. Okay. So say between, let's say between now and the end of the end of December. Which, All right. Okay. okay. So the, all right, so the first thing that you wanna do is find out what is your bank balance today. Okay. Okay, so you know what your bank balance is right at this second, right? So then we wanna know, well, how much money is gonna be coming in? So we need to know how much accounts receivable were owed and we find that out by running the AR aging report. AR aging report, okay. So it doesn't stand for automatic rifle. The AR is not automatic rifle. It's like accounts receivable aging report. Okay. What the heck is automatic, it? Automatic rifle. Too much yeah. NRA, Mike. Too much NRA. <laughs> so yeah, so accounts receivable aging report. And what you'll find uh, in this report is so it prints out and you can print it out of any accounting system. It's, a, it's just a general report. Uh, and so what happens is, so all of your, all your customers are on there and then it's, it's got rows and sections. And so one row might say zero to 15 or zero to 30 mm -hmm. and then so on and so on. So, you know, 15 to 30 or 30 to 60, you know, and on down the line. So now, you know, how much money you have coming in. So from your customers that is due. Okay. Okay. Um, so that zero to 30 and 30 to 45, are those zero to 30 is what? That's the due date. That's when the okay, money is. So over zero to that's 30 the age. days. Okay, from zero mm -hmm. to 30 days uh, and 30 to 45 days, that's the aging part of the account. Uh, okay, of, of the account right. uh, aging report. Okay, got it. Correct. Got it. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 All right, so you're gonna see what's coming in over the next 30 days. Okay. All right, so um, if you want to, you, mm -hmm. can, you can take it a step further okay. and you can identify what your expected revenues might be. So what your sales for say December are. Okay. If you I want to that. look at additional monies that may be coming in, maybe you have, maybe you have cash customers. Okay. Uh, like if you're in retail or if you're in a restaurant, you get paid the day that you provide the service. Right. Right. So you can also add that into your calculation if you want to. Okay. So, um, so uh, go ahead. Sorry. So it, it, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So if, if I'm trying to project that, and like you said, I'm, I run on a cash, uh, a, you know, a, a cash basis, I, I have no idea what's going to happen because I've already got the habit. I have no idea what's going to happen Monday, what's going to happen Tuesday, what's going to happen Thursday. I, I know five is payroll. I know yeah. that, a, you know, restaurant, I got to buy inventory, uh, you know, like a lot of other retail businesses. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. What do I do? I don't know yeah. what that's going to be. Yeah. So that's kind of where you want to look into historical information. Okay. So if you look into historical information, um, there's a lot of companies this year are doing really well. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing really well and the pandemic hasn't affected you, you can go back to 2020 or mm -hmm. even 2019 and take a look at that historical data and see, well, what were my sales last year? Okay. And you'll get an idea, uh, you know, a basis to work from on how much you might be expecting this year. Okay. So, okay. 
Okay. Um, if you are in an industry and your business has been affected by the pandemic, mm -hmm. you might not have the historical data from last year might not help you because right. this year is definitely not like last year. <laughs> right. So, so in that instance, maybe look back three to six months. What's been going on three to six months as you've been dealing in the, the COVID situation, uh -huh. it will give you a little bit better idea of okay. what your sales may be. Right. It, it's a little bit more of a realistic number considering, you know, a lot of the states are going back into a shutdown. Right. So depending upon your situation, either look historical from like last year um, or mm -hmm. the year before the combination or look at the last three to six months to kind of gain an understanding of what you might have coming in. Okay, that makes sense. So I, I, we, like you said, there are some industries um, that haven't been affected by the, you know, the, the crazy COVID uh, economy. I know that uh, logistics the industry you and I share, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've advised, we have clients in the logistics industry. Um, have, they've had a banner year, construction, new construction. Everybody knows new construction is, is doing really well. And if you are, you know, filling up the online shopping cart and hitting the, you know, checkout, e-commerce, you know, e-commerce e is kicking yeah. on. So some some industries have done fairly well, uh, but there are some that um, that have really suffered. The mom and pop restaurants, uh, you know, the hair salons, you yeah. know, the the string, you know, the string of you know um, restaurants that you, you know that you own. Uh, that mom and pop has gotten, you know, gotten the, you know, the the heck kicked out of them. Yep. So, but if, if you're, I want to go back to a point that you mentioned here, if we're trying to gain clarity, if we're trying to gain control and we're now starting to add some discipline, going back and looking at that account um, receivable. And I'm looking at the, the, you know, the last zero to 30 days who owes me money. And I start to look at maybe 30 to 45, right? I'm starting to kind of now see who's starting to go past a grace period with me. And if I'm business to business, mm -hmm. I may have to pick up the phone, gaining control, right? Yep. And contact some of these businesses, if it's B2B, who owe me some cash Absolutely. with a friendly, pleasant reminder. Hey, you owe me five grand. You owe us 20 grand. <laughs> you got it, Mike. Yeah, and you Gain have to control. be, yep. You have to be on top of those calls. The, the uh, squeaky wheel gets the grease, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to do it. Remember, gaining control of the cash. And like Donna said, the squeaky wheel, you know, gets the oil. And I, I know that, uh, like, like we mentioned earlier, a lot of mom and pops, a lot of industries have been, have just had, you know, the crap kicked out of them by COVID. And that's probably, you know, we're going to have to come back with a different show uh, for that one. But, you know, we will address it. So, um, you know, and, and if I understand what you said, Donna, if I have been a part of this pandemic economy, <clears throat> I got to get something to move forward. So yeah. in a pandemic economy, which we didn't have last year, maybe grab as much historical data from this year, three months. I think if you can do six months, take a look at what I've been doing over this time, both in lockdown and not in lockdown. And I have got, I got to start somewhere. So yeah. I, I, so what you're saying is that now becomes a, a part of the analysis, of, the analysis of my, uh, of the a, um, AR report, right? Yeah, yeah, it becomes part of the picture that you're trying to build. Okay, yes. part of the picture. Okay, all right, that makes sense. So. Now, as I'm going through this, what else do I need to be um, do I need to be gathering, you know, from you know fr from this data? I've got I've got uh, you mentioned the bank balance. Yes. Right. Uh, so now I'm gaining control. I, I went through and I pulled for, uh, probably for the first time ever uh, <laughs> my uh, AR accounts receivable aging report. I'm, if I'm in in the middle of this pandemic economy, I'm looking over. What I did over the last six months, if I haven't been affected by this, and and I know that I've got a lot of owners. Just because you haven't been affected by this doesn't mean no cash clarity is not affecting you. 
you can be having a banner year and you're still getting thrown thrown all over the place by not understanding your cash. So yeah. I've got my bank balance sheet. I'm, I'm, yeah, I got my uh, the bank balance, what I got currently in the bank, my balance there. I finally go through, I get everything that I can on the um, accounts receivable aging report. What else do I got to get? Am I good or do I need more? Now, now you need to switch gears. So okay. we've looked at what we have coming in. That's our okay. cash inflow. Now we need to check out what's going out. Oh, crap. And we do that by looking at our accounts payable. Oh, geez. So oh, okay. <laughs> accounts payable. So you're going to do the same process for AP, which is okay. you're going to go in and run an accounts payable aging report. Okay. And when you see this report, it looks exactly the same as the AR. It's set up exactly the same. You've got your vendors and you have your aged columns. So okay. you so you focus on, you know, the 30 days for, you know, the sake of our conversation. Okay. Um, so what do you owe in the next 30 days? Um, I do want to warn you, though, if um, a lot of people, when they're putting their bills in, they pay, they put them in the system as they pay them, oh. not as they receive them. And so keep in mind that if you do that, your AP report mm -hmm. won't be accurate. Does that make sense? So if I understand what you're saying, some business owners, I know you're out there guys, okay? We gotta talk about it. You put in what you are going to pay, not what you should pay. Is that right? The discipline of knowing what you have to pay and a different mindset of what you're going to pay. It's not, a, right. it's not an accurate picture, do I get it? Right, and you might get your bills paid that way, but mm -hmm. you have no clarity. Right. Because you can't go and run that report mm -hmm. and know what you owe because there's things missing. Okay. All right. So the discipline to put everything in that is owed over the next 30 days. What are some examples of some things that should examples be showing up on the um, uh, accounts payable aging report? Sure. Happy to share some, some examples. So uh, most all companies have an internet bill. Okay. Some have cable bills. Mm -hmm. Everybody pays rent. So you're going to have your rental bill on there, insurance payments, um, cost of materials for your inventory. If you're manufacturing or, you know, you have things on the shelf, you have to pay for those things before you can sell them. Um, things like that, office supply bills that are coming, power bills, you know, utilities, you know, um, stuff like that. So any of your... Mm -hmm your regular, you know, business operating expenses, those things are all going to be on there. Now, they should be. Now you mentioned earlier, you know, you've had experience with some business owners that went out, got short-term bank loans or, um, you know, the, the fast cash loans. Should those, should those loans fall in somewhere on that account payable report, aging accounts of payable report? You know, people do it different. So okay. you can do it one of two ways. Number one, you can enter your next payment due okay. so that it does capture on there. Or number two, you can know that that bill is coming and add it to your age, what you have going out. Okay. So okay. If, you, if, you, if you've got monthly installments and it's, and it's dedicated monthly, mm -hmm. that needs to go in that 30 days. If yes. you've got maybe a, a, a vendor materials that you owe and they say, hey, billing cycle is every 45 days, you know, you don't have to choke yourself for cash on 30 when you know you got 45. So that correct those those loans or sometimes it's a quarterly payment, balloon payment, those go in the appropriate col column mm -hmm. where they should be in advance. So I can have, again, an accurate picture. OK, all right. right. And make sure that you don't forget about your payroll. Payroll goes in the accounts uh, payable? No. No? No, sir. Uh, payroll is not included there. Payroll is a complete separate process from your AP because okay. your employees aren't vendors. They're okay. employees. Okay. Okay. So that's tracked in a whole different system. So you want right. to make sure that you that you capture the payroll and the payroll taxes that are you know part of that. Okay. All right. We'll have to come back for another another show for that, but we have to be, again, it, go, it goes back to the clarity. Mm -hmm. you know, do we know what payroll is going to be this month, but 
that's, you know, it's going to come, it's going to be another part of an accounting system, but for the sake of gaining the control and the clarity, we're going to have to acknowledge what is payroll this month, every, if it's bi week, uh, bi month, and whatever it needs to be in over the next mm -hmm. 30 days, we got to capture that information. Got, do I get it? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So I've got my current bank balance, right? I have uh, the AR aging report. Mm -hmm. I have my AP aging report. Um, now what? You got your payroll. <laughs> you know, I've, got all, I've got the data. I've got the historical. I've got some historical sales information, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I now know what's coming in. An yep. idea what's coming in. I've now taken the discipline to understand what's going out and where it should be going. How do I get out of this? What do I do? I've got 30 days. What, now, now what? Okay. Now you're going to put all those pieces together. Okay. By that, I mean, <clears throat> you're just going to do a simple calculation. Okay. You're going to take your bank balance. Bank balance. What we started with. Okay. You're going to add the expected AR that's going to be paid. Plus the accounts. Okay. 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 You minus out the AP that you've got to pay. Okay. Minus out your payroll and the taxes associated with that payroll. Okay. And bam, you're done. That okay. gives you your ending cash balance for that period of time. So, so what you've just accomplished, so yeah. snaps, snaps for Mike, Yeah. you just created your own mini cash analysis. Is that what the hell that means? Yes. <laughs> And I'm hoping for your sake that it's positive. All right. Okay. <laughs> Just because I took accounting in college doesn't mean, hey, let me tell you folks, a C in accounting, they'll pass you. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. So at, right. at this point, at this point, Mike, you know what your actual cash position is. Now you have solid information that you can use to make some decisions. All right. I take my bank balance, what I have, my current state, what I have right now, I, I add in there the accounts receivable, the money that I'm going to be receiving in, I take out, I subtract all of the accounts payable, the leases, the utilities, the cables, the short uh, cable uh, cost of material, short-term loans, I subtract out, I got to go to a different setting, but we're not going to worry about that right now, but I got to get the information on what my payroll is, subtract that out. And hopefully that's a positive balance, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have just did a miniature cash analysis. Yes, sir. I just learned something. And now I've taken that first step into gaining control of the cash. And I can now start to make some decisions. And like we said, hopefully it's a positive balance. Look, if I tell you what, if it's not a positive number, I, I, and sometimes that's what we don't want to look at that. I get it. I understand. And if it's not a positive number, there are some things that we can do. Is that right, Donna? Absolutely. But there, that's going to have to, to be another show. Yeah, <laughs> right. that, that's a little bit more. <laughs> it's a little, a little bit longer different. conversation. A yeah. little longer. All right. And uh, so what we'll do, we're going to come back. We'll have Donna back with us. She's going to take us through that particular process. If it's positive, Congratulations, you've taken the first step. If it's negative, don't worry. You've still taken the first step to gaining control of your cash. We're gonna have Donna come back with us and from her experience, what she's done to help some of her clients out if that, uh, if that, if that cash balance is a negative. But uh, in the meantime, Donna, if people do wanna get a hold of you because you are the virtual CFO at Temple Executive Coaching, how can they find you? Um, actually, it's just very simple. Just send me an email at Donna at TempleExecutiveCoaching.com. I we'll check emails all the time. So, <laughs> All right. All right. Excellent. Donna, thank you so much for the education, for helping us gain control of our cash so we can finally get some clarity. And we're going to see you guys again. Thanks for attending, listeners. Thanks for being with us. We can't wait to meet with you again in our next episode of Cash clarity, gain control of your cash before it starts to control you. Thanks a lot, guys.